back a long time ago when uh, my mom and my dad are still alive and then my, uh, my Aunt Mary and her husband, uh, Uncle Mark, they'd all go swimming out here and they'd come over and launch their boat down here and because they made a, a sand castle here and I don't know, like my grandma would be sitting up there and watching us while we were swimming and that. And it makes me think about back to like my seventh and like uh, sixth birthday and all that, you know, having my friends and all that come over here. And... In the summer, I swim every day. I, I will swim not too far, but I go pretty much along the shoreline, uh, right at the end of the piers and I'll swim up the channel. and. Oh, it's wonderful. I, I'm out there and I think, I am queen of this lake. <laughs> Termination caused a lot of people to leave this reservation. We had a lot of people that had full, full-blooded Minami people. And then when you leave, you find a different partner a non monomy partner and so then your your blood quantums you know are dwindling. We'll never, never get that back what, what happened to us. Never. A, a tribe has the has the right to to buy property to buy a property that is not in trust that was originally part of the tribe's territory and then put that land in trust to basically expand the, the reservation as such. That has caused some conflicts. Well, actually, I grew up in the 60s, and then we were terminated, so we had to go to school. We didn't have our own school district. I had to go to school in Shawano for my high school years. And it wasn't, um, there was prejudice and, you know, um, discrimination. It was rampant during those years and you just learn to deal with it, you know, as a young adult. We have a very good relationship with the tribe as far as our boat landing is concerned. If the tribe shut down that boat landing, we couldn't get our, our boats either on the lake or out of the lake. So it behooves us to get on with the Menominees. And they're nice people. In general, there's a few not good ones, but I knew a few on this side of the fence are that way too. So it's, um, there were a lot on this side of the fence that's not that way too, but uh, um, who, who was it that said, can't we all get along? Somebody said that one time in history. In many ways, Legend Lake looks exactly like it is supposed to this time of the year. A weekend getaway of recreation and relaxation, a city dweller's escape to paradise. But if you look closer, spend time here, along the shores of Legend Lake, you'll find more than a crowded culture of tourism. Legend Lake is the home of two communities who periodically find it difficult to understand each other. Just northwest of Green Bay, Wisconsin, Legend Lake is located in the heart of the Menominee Indian Reservation. More than 50 years ago, the U.S. government terminated Menominee's tribal nation status in an attempt to assimilate the tribe. The Menominee borders were opened up for white expansion. Parts of the tribe's pristine forests and quiet lakes were no longer places for sustenance and ceremony. Tribal lands became personal property. A commercial development dream to merge nine lakes into one became a reality. The tribal landscape was forever changed when Legend Lake was created. After the Menominee were terminated as a tribe, the parcel shores of Legend Lake were bought up by whites. For 12 years, the Menominee fought to have their tribal nation status restored. Finally, in 1973, the fight paid off. But a return to nationhood did not mean the return of all lands sold off to whites. Specifically, white Legend Lake property owners retained the ownership of their parcels and homes. 
For years, white property owners have disputed Menominee tribal claims to the shores of Legend Lake. The dispute has at times gripped both communities with palpable and polarizing tension. There is too little discussion and too much bad feeling. Some people in Legend Lake communities believe the time is now for earnest discourse on the history and future of Legend Lake. You know, the obvious observation is the federal government played a, a role in this. I mean, termination from a Menominee standpoint was disastrous. I think everybody pretty much agrees on that. It was a disastrous experiment. One of the traditions that we have in Indian country is a talking circle. And it's a, a place where everyone has his or her say. Um, they're able to speak individually without interruption. Other people listen uh, respectfully. And while this forum is, I guess, what you might call a modified talking circle, we're not passing an object around and, and uh, doing a traditional talking circle, it is evocative of, of a circle where people are invited to sit down, talk about issues that really are close to their heart, and be able to share their thoughts in a safe, comfortable, respectful environment. So we're kind of stuck with trying to work out something between the county and the tribe uh, and trying to do the best we can with people that have mental health commitments, um, AODA commitments, and so it's a difficult situation right now. And you know, you might use, say that could be a resource, but I don't see them being too receptive to that at this point. Myrna Warrington was born and raised on the Menominee Reservation. Like many of her generation, she left the reservation for the city, Chicago. I was living in Chicago at the time and my mother and I were down there. We worked in a um, factory and worked hard and you know every cent went into the house and to the food and so I was walking to work one day and I walked past the recruiting office and stopped in there and signed up. I was 18 and um, next day I was downtown testing and on a plane. It was really that fast because it was doing Vietnam and uh, I'll forever be grateful that I did that. After serving in the military, she returned home in the mid-1970s. Nationhood was restored to the Menominee, but the damage caused by termination was all too painfully evident. Throughout the years, many Menominee have not come home. Termination did that because people that had work here, they had, uh, we had our own hospital, our own clinic, our own dental clinic, our own um, electrical plant, so we had a lot of, there was, there was work. And then when termination came, they shut down the hospital, shut down the clinics, and then people had to leave to the cities to go to work. So they went to Chicago, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, and even further. Some came home afterwards, but a lot just stayed out there. They just never came home. But Menominee restoration efforts got a big boost in the late 1980s when the government authorized gaming on tribal lands. With profits from the newly built Menominee Casino and from the world-renowned tribal forests, the tribe built schools, a health clinic, and a college. And then the tribe began to purchase Legend Lake property, returning the land back into trust status. When Indian tribes signed treaties with the federal government, establishing the reservation system, tribal lands were put into trust. This meant tribes like the Menominee had the right to govern their own lands with some supervision from the federal government. And based on these treaties, trust land could not be taxed by the state or the federal government. For me, for living on uh, trust land, uh, I can't afford to pay the taxes, you know, and I can't afford to uh, do, uh, do like, um, like uh, fix up my house and that because I'm uh, economically challenged right now, and that's why I'm trying to better myself. So. That way I can, you know, start doing some things to my house because it's always starting to, you know, crumble apart, you know, but. Leon Fowler would not be able to afford his spot on Legend Lake if his home was not built on trust land. Tribal ownership of Lakeshore property means members pay a minimal yearly fee to the tribe 
and do not pay property taxes to Menominee County. But for tribal members like Leon, trust land is a great symbol and reminder of how the Menominee have viewed their relationship with the land. People, they have to understand is that, you know, hey man, if, I, if I'm staying here, you know, uh, um, you know, pay, make payments for your house payments or your rent payments and that, but actually what it really boils down to is that, uh, the creator gave us this land, this land where the whole area, you know, not, not just around this lake, but everything in Wisconsin, that, that's what he originally gave us. And in keeping with tribal traditions, Leon is committed to passing on his home to future Menominee generations. Our land is in trust, so that way uh, it'll stay in Menominee land. And that when, I, uh, when I die, I have to will it away to my niece or nephew or my, somebody in my family if I have, decide to have a child by that time, you know, it'll stay within the, the family. But the Menominee Nation's sovereign right to trust land is viewed very differently by non-Indians. With each parcel of lakefront property the tribe buys from white owners, the burden of taxation falls on mostly non-Menominee property owners. I don't know, it would be a, it's very difficult to look into the future and, and to find out how it's all going to work out while this tax base problem is still there. And this is causing what's causing trouble on Legend Lake because they don't want the tribe to put any more land into trust because, again, it erodes the tax base. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower signed into law the Menominee Termination Act. Despite a tribal council vote to reject termination, the Menominee had no recourse but to consider possible alternatives for securing tribal members' physical ties to their homelands. The tribe decided to turn the reservation into a county system of governance, but with the land under the control of Menominee Enterprises Incorporated. Tribal members could buy lots, as could non-tribal people. In 1961, the Menominee Nation became the state of Wisconsin's 72nd county, Menominee County. Mary Ann Pender is a Menominee County resident. Born in London, England, she immigrated to the U.S. and worked as a travel agent in Milwaukee. She moved to Menominee County when she retired. A lot of people couldn't quite figure out what I was going to do up here, and at that time I didn't either, but uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And I've never looked back. I've always enjoyed it. Marianne does not live on Legend Lake. She lives on a neighboring lake, which is also within tribal borders. Like every other non-native property owner, she pays her share of property taxes. Um, I do understand, as been pointed out to me quite forcefully by some members of the Legend Lake Association, that what happens the more that land goes into trust, the less our tax base gets. And at the moment, our tax base is about 1%, I think, Terry, isn't it? Maybe two. Maybe two. So I can understand their concern. On the other hand, um, the sensitivity to land into trust up here is high. The tribe feels that it is their right as a sovereign nation. When the Menominee Nation was restored in 1973, the county status remained. A number of people have said, if you talk to somebody outside of the county, especially in government, when you explain the situation here, they say, well, that's very unique, isn't it? But it doesn't help. Going back to the when Mark Green was Speaker of the House in Madison, we went to see him, and he said, well, yeah, I think it's a great idea, but, it, but your problems in Menominee County was created by the federal government, so therefore it's a federal problem, not ours. So then we went to see Mark Green when he was a congressman in Washington. And he said, surprisingly, oh, that's a state problem. That's not a federal problem, right? And, uh, and basically, it, that, that's the way it's been. Land rights in Menominee County are even more complex when it comes to Legend Lake. When the Menominee Nation became a county, there were suddenly new costs to pay to provide county public services and infrastructure. The Wisconsin tourism industry was booming in the 1960s. Eager to cash in, the newly created Menominee Enterprises Incorporated proceeded to engage in negotiations with a commercial developer who proposed joining nine of the tribe's lakes into one body of water. The Legend Lake project would generate needed jobs and revenue for the tribe and would help meet 
county property tax obligations. The plan to reshape the 5,160-acre natural landscape was not embraced by all Menominee members, but their voices were silenced by the roar of bulldozers. Their concerns about what would be lost were forever shut out when the damming of streams and lakes was completed. And in those diggings, they dug up a lot of artifacts and a lot of mounds and things and just took them and dumped them. And nobody knows where it went. So when doing that, you know, and, and, I, and that people were protesting because they knew that was going on. And so that was big, the biggest part of protesting, I think, in the late 60s was the desecration of our Indian lands and our, our archaeological sites and um, marching, you know, in Washington onto the state and things and, and, and finally getting them to listen that this had to stop. So. But the economic dream of Legend Lake was never fully realized as the development was made, it wasn't completed when the Menominees won the right to the reservation and, and had restoration back. Because it was going on, and there was all that emotion going around it at that time, the property that wasn't developed and sold that would have been part of property lay reverted back to the tribe. With restoration came a new tribal council. The tribe all but abandoned the Legend Lake economic dream and instead turned its focus on bringing land, including Legend Lake property, back into trust. It scared the hell out of everybody else because you can see as your property becomes less and less, the property tax burden remains the same, then your proportion is gonna go higher and higher. So that was always kind of underlying um, a lot of e feelings that people had. Terry Brooks and his wife, Mary Pat, purchased Legend Lake property in the late 1970s. Terry, what's your relationship with the lake? Well, water has always been important to my wife, Mary Pat, and, and myself. We both grew up close to water. <clears throat> I mean, my water was a creek that ran between Van Dyne and, and Lake Winnebago, but it was still water, and it was always part of, part of our life. And Mary Pad grew up close to the Fox River in Appleton. And that was always our goal, to, to have a place on the water. That was, that was our middle class dream, was, was to own property on the water. Like all property owners, Terry is a member of the Legend Lake Property Owners Association. Members pay annual dues to maintain the health and wealth of the lake and to regulate as much as they can access and use of the lake. Terry understands the frustration many Legend Lake property owners feel. And, you know, the fear of property taxes going up or your property values going down is something that is just kind of inside you and you react to it. You can be, you can be irrational about it. Many white property owners fear an increased county tax burden. And this has fed growing tensions with the Menominee. In 2009, the Legend Lake Property Owners Association voted in favor of a covenant aimed at restricting the tribe from purchasing any more privately owned Legend Lake properties and placing it into trust. The covenant has fueled even more division within the two communities. Terry did not vote for the covenant and he is concerned. If you talk to a tribal member they will be angry about it but they're, but they're, they're angry at that covenant. They're not angry at you. And they're, and they're not saying they're gonna, you know, really take any action or so on and so forth. It's, it's just something that, it's just another thing that white people have done to them. From the tribe's perspective, white property owners' concerns about an unfair tax burden are incorrect. The tribe argues that a significant amount of gaming revenue not only goes to the Menominee County, but to the state of Wisconsin as well. I, I learned a lot by when Easter and I were going and talking to different groups. One of the groups we went and talked to was the, the Menominee veterans. And, you know, we talked about some of these issues and that, that trust versus non-trust, property taxes versus non-property taxes, because we were, you know, t explaining that, that people are upset, they don't want their property taxes to go up. And one of the veterans says, he says, we pay, for, we pay taxes too. And he said that, you know, the, 
we, we have a casino. The casino gets so many million dollars a year, and the state takes two or three million dollars. He said, "That's that's what we're paying." And if you know, if you look at that from a, a rational or just from a not a non stereotypical and not prejudicial environment, he's he's exactly right. Tensions between Legend Lake property owners and the tribe have rippled beyond the lake's shorelines. Many Menominee and white property owners do not live on the lake, but they feel the divisive emotions. For many tribal members, Legend Lake symbolizes ongoing, deeply rooted racism. Leslie Shawana Kasich got her education in a white school system. Growing up next to small, white, reservation border towns is a shared history among many Indians. Leslie was bused to the school in the town of Shawano. During high school, um, I didn't get to participate in many activities and I actually didn't even um, develop a career path because they didn't really work with you know, Native American students at the time. So I never met with a counselor because you, know, you just did what you had to do and, and then you went home. But Leslie did find a career path. She put herself through college, and today she is the principal at the Menominee High School. A big part of her personal mission as an educator is to make sure the younger Menominee generation has the needed support and guidance to take advantage of every educational opportunity and benefit. Not so ironically, Leslie believes that the white property owners of Legend Lake are instrumental in helping Menominee youth succeed. Well, actually, um, what, what's happening is that we have the adults from Legend Lake, which is a huge resource because we have retired engineers and lawyers and doctors and, and such, and, and we were relying on that resource to come in and mentor our youth so it's not to say that youth and uh, you know Menominee and non-Menominee were working basically in the high school, um, getting kids to set goals, to develop plans, career plans at an early age, and to work with families in that effort as well. And it's proven to be highly successful. Um, I assisted laying the groundwork with Terry, and it's it's blossomed. Has it given you some ideas on how to get the adults talking to each other in a, a more productive way? Um, definitely, most definitely. Um, a lot of the uh, people that are, you know, real active, like in the Taxpayers Association and, and the uh, Property Owners Association, are actual people that are assisting in, in the Bridges program at the school in the circles program. And I see that as a plus because you get to see people, you know, wearing different hats basically and, 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 it, and it's a great thing. It's a great feeling to get to know people as persons and not as you're a member of the Taxpayers Association or, mm. or in that way because everybody is, is human and, you know, has feelings and is willing to work with you. So that's kind of our our, our common thread. Garen and Lois Roberts are among the earliest white settlers of Legend Lake. They bought their property in the late 1960s. They raised their children on Legend Lake, and now they are sharing the lake with their grandchildren. Until a few years ago, it was mostly skiing. <laughs> but the children all do now, and they've got great grandchildren that are skiing too. And uh, I think that was in the swimming, I think, is a big thing for us. We do do fishing too, but not as. Uh, we're not as avid a fisherman as a lot of people are. 
After the children grew up and left home, Lois became involved in community service, volunteering her time to clothing drives for Menominee Indian children, sewing and selling quilts. Over the years, she has built strong relationships with many Menominee. I think that's a big part of our problem up here. I think, like, like Mary Ann said, too many people would not be comfortable living under Menominee law. And I, again, I've lived up here long enough. I believe I know a lot of good Menominees as well as good whites. But um, yes, I would be comfortable living under Menominee law. While the standoff between many white Legend Lake property owners and the Menominee tribe continues, efforts to take care of the lake and its shorelines are not stalled. In spite of the deep divisions, these communities have long recognized that maintaining good stewardship of the land and lake is everyone's responsibility. One of the unfortunate trade-offs of tourism, the city dwellers who come to play on Legend Lake on the weekends, is that they bring more than their boats and coolers. Many weekenders boat on different lakes, and when they launch their boats on Legend Lake, they may also launch invasive plant and animal species into the lake. Say when they're bringing in their boats from the cities, and, that, and have the, uh, that's how them zebra muzzles travel, and that, you know they attach themselves to their boats, and that, you're supposed to uh, wash your boats off before you put it into the lake. But to say if one person doesn't do that and they get that uh, invasive species into that lake, you know, and then, then that, the lake's gonna be affected and then you're really screwed then, you know. Like look at, for example, when they first brought in the first invasive species, you know, and how they're gonna deal with it, right? Crazy. Look at it like right now, you know, we got them tent caterpillars, we got that, uh, that um, oak wilt, purple loose strife, uh, gypsy moss, um, emerald ash borers approaching that, you know, all it took was just once, you know. And the motorized boats and watercrafts can do more damage. Wave action created by speedboats washes away precious shorelines. See, see like right there with that boat that rolled by, see them waves that are coming like that? Like, see, what I was, uh, early as I can remember that, so we always had them rocks there, you know, and then, so as well as uh, to keep that shoreline from washing away. So when you have these big speedboats that come racing through here, because there ain't no wake zone here. So when you come by like that, you know, they spin around and make them waves, all them waves come right up to the, uh, the beach and wash my uh, shoreline away. And then there's the disease of trees. It is not uncommon for weekend tourists to bring their own firewood from the city, from diseased trees that have been cut down and chopped into firewood. You see the stumps around here uh, from oak wilt. The trees uh, catch this, they die, they cut them down, and uh, you know they, their neighbor or, or somebody where they're from, whether it's Green Bay or Chicago or whatever, has a tree that dies. What are you going to do with it in the city? Oh, well, here, you got some free wood. And so this oak quilt in this area started at a wood pile where some people got free wood. Controlling the damage created by weekend tourists is a costly effort. Both the tribe and Legend Lake property owners allocate monies in a joint effort to maintain the health of the lake. Wayne Town is chair of the Legend Lake Protection and Rehabilitation District. Their mission is to monitor and improve the health of the lake. Uh, we have, I think, a very, very good working relationship with the uh, Tribal Environmental Services. Uh, they check out the chemicals that uh, our consultant says we should be using. And uh, if they find no fault, uh, they take that to the tribal legislature. Tribal legislature then gives us a permit to treat uh, for the invasive species. That the Menominee and white property owners could join together in solidarity over the health of Legend Lake poses an obvious question. Why can't the tribe and property owners find an equitable solution to their land dispute? Both communities agree that in a very real way, their predicament was caused by the U.S. government, terminating the Menominee Nation status, and exacerbated by the state of Wisconsin with its regulatory demands from turning Menominee Reservation into a county.
Is it reasonable to request that the federal government make up lost tax revenues by paying Menominee County in lieu of property taxes for trust land? But if there are alternatives for resolving this land dispute, few are exploring them. The fact is, both parties are dug in with their positions. The Menominee believe trust land is a cornerstone of sovereignty. The Legend Lake property owners simply believe it is a question of fairness. Why should they pay taxes while others are exempt? But for those few who are talking, the conflict over Legend Lake is a starting point towards healing the rift among Menominee County communities. I want to give everybody an opportunity to share some final thoughts and um, some, some maybe solutions to how to improve relations between Legend Lake Menominee and non-Menominee folks and the tribal folks. And, um, and maybe again, you know, reiterating some of the common, common themes, common goals that people have. And, um, just wanted to give you all an opportunity to share some, some final words of wisdom. So, My belief and my passion is that we can achieve the potential that's possible for this community. And I think we've made, we've made progress in the past couple of years, and I think that we will continue to make progress in the future. It can be looked at in a um, you know, professional, friendly manner so that you know, there's no hard feelings and it doesn't get, you know, to a heightened situation. So I think that you just need to bring it to the table because you never know what's going to go on. But you got to at least try. Right. And of course, I do think we need to target the school children also. Very important. Communicate, education, um, learn from each other. And uh, with that, I think we could... Uh, get something accomplished, you know, instead of um, being stuck behind, you know, move forward, and it's a start. And that's all it takes, you know, you get one, two, three, you, you start small. You know, you're not going to change everybody all at once. And I have great hopes for the future. I think uh, we're especially together on this uh, environmental situation. And as you said before, a common enemy brings us all together. But. Um, as Pogo said, you know, I saw the enemy and it is me, you know, type stuff. So it, uh, um, no, I, ha I have hope. I think, I think we're going to go in the right direction.